The focus of our attention, the key species for the program in the tropical area, is the great frigate bird. Research on the ecology at sea of the species, for adults as well as the young ones, are just starting. Having made a selection of individuals from their plumage and their activity, Argos transmitters are fixed on the feathers on their backs. All the young animals carrying transmitters are still on land. Their geographical positions are now relayed by satellite, and the researchers wait. The data collected on the adults allows the researchers to analyze the behavior of this species, which is completely atypical in the community of marine birds. With 2.3 meter wingspan, the frigate is a bird built for gliding. The transmitters will allow the researchers to understand their techniques of movement and the energy cost. The transmitters will record heart rates and wing beats, as well as the altitude of the bird and the speed of flight. All this information is collected by a data recording station which downloads the data each time the adults come back to feed their young. To travel, the frigate gains altitude, carried on the uplift to 2,000 meters. They often hunt with tuna and dolphins because these make the flying fish come up to the surface. And this is exactly the moment when the frigate catches its favorite prey in flight. In spite of the fact that they live essentially at sea, the frigate doesn't have waterproof plumage unlike all other marine birds. And this paradox means that it can't land on the surface of the ocean. The necessity to learn how to use air currents and to catch its prey in flight could explain why the period of learning is exceptionally long. Seven months after their transmitters were placed, great movements are at last seen in the Mozambique Channel. Ten days after their departure, without ever landing, our birds have covered thousands of kilometers to the north. The young frigate is constantly moving. She approaches the island of Sumatra, 11,000 kilometers away from her birth site. Where will she go to? If one overlies the movements of the individuals with transmitters, one sees that during their first months of life, their movements depend totally on the intensity and the direction of the winds. Some birds have even managed to stay in the air for more than two months without ever landing. In the tropical zone, scenarios of climate change suggest that there will be an increase in the intensity of cyclones. They will therefore have to deal with much stronger constraints in the future. Their adaptive capacity will be the key to their survival. <laughs>